Good morning. That's how my day went. Dadgummit. How are you guys, man? How are you, Isabel? I am fantastic. I missed you the last two Wednesdays, dude. Did you? Did you yeah, really? I got, thought you would. Ah, you know, hmm. you stop pretending. Of course I missed you. I was busy, you know, uh, earning a living and then doing my certification, which I will talk about later. And, and yeah, I missed the show. I missed you guys. I missed Lion because, I mean, come on. What's not to miss? Look at him. Did, did uh, Lion miss you? More than likely, he did not. This is uh, my new beverage. I love it. Energy drink. Is it sponsored? Uh, it will be. Oh, so fantastic. The Hounds. Let me see if I can get it in focus. The Hounds should sponsor it. Yeah. Hundred <laughs> <laughs> percent. Oh. oh my God, yeah. that's funny. Oh, Tell them how it looks the like it. right here. Yeah. So, you should you when know, I, and write I, it on uh, on Mike's. <laughs> whenever I go out in public, you should see the looks I get. Oh my God. Where did you buy these things, dude? Ah, this oh, is good. Man. So it's a, it's a koozie. It fits over a drink. Ah, so it's not real. Yeah. Okay. And so you can put it over any drink you want. And it's uh, rich in vitamin double Ds. You. <laughs> Jason said, did that say beast milk? Yes, that's exactly what it's. We, yeah. you, you always, Lion, you always find the funniest thing. Uh, I'm covering and it up. I don't know why. There we go. Share with Mike, if, if I, we can take a second, I, I know our time in pre is precious, but share with Mike your cooking thing that you bought that you showed me oh, when we did. That's sure, yeah. fantastic. It's real quick. It's called a Brava. In essence, it's just a, um, you know, we had the little uh, cooking set when we were kids and the easy bake oven. That's what it is. It's an adult easy bake oven. You can control it by your phone and just cook whatever you want. And cool. Whatever. <laughs> okay. What What is going on? We're not supposed to be this goofy until like after the sponsors, man. It's, oh, it's really okay. Our own. Well, that's right, that's right. that's because I'm on the show, dude. That's what happens. That's what happened. That is, see, you know, <laughs> we'll have to find you another course. Yeah. Hey, real quick. We got the guy from Blue Collar Backers on here, man. We we can't delay this, man. I mean, come on. Like, dang, hey, not since I got the cease and desist order or I was waiting for one from Papa John since I've been this excited to have a guest on. Uh, you know, like like a like a poor kid living in Santa's workshop. I mean, dang. So uh let me let me do this real quick. First of all, audience, because we actually have people here right now. And look, Kelly is here, Jackie, Jackie's Melissa. here, Jason wow. is here, a lot of people. Oh, are Kristen. Here. Kristen Norai. Oh, I got your book. It it it, it didn't print uh, silhouettes. It's good. Uh, and by the way, audience, folks, hounds, tell me this: Were you one of the people that just crapped your pants when LinkedIn glitched and thought you went to jail? Cause, yeah. cause I was. I was the first one. I said, "Oh, sweet Jesus! That what did I do?" And everybody's typing to me, right? Because I'm the king of it. I own the, the platform, I guess. And everybody's like, what happened? <laughs> Because I went to message everybody and say, can you see me? And then I had like two people already coming at me going, where am I? And uh, so, yeah, thank you, uh, LinkedIn. We're never bored with as long as you're around. Uh, so, yeah, uh, let me show you this. This is so you all have been on me, all the people, especially the people early. Uh, Christine Bell, thank you so much. You're awesome. Um, the Cure for Burnout. Thank you, uh, Claudia Aww. and all the other, uh, Dr. New, all the folks in the leadership and the hounds. Aww. I took time off. I actually put the phone down after 15 to 18 months of nonstop on that phone. And man, it was the most recharging. I woke up the next day. So I took the, the little one out Saturday. I woke, out, woke up Sunday and it was amazing. My creativity, I, I jotted down a whole strategy in three minutes. It, it was unbelievable. Because when you work, 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 you don't have time to create and, and unlock things, right? So you heard it. You know, I know we don't have time to walk. Well, I don't have time not to now because all I'm going to do is stare at that screen and be grumpy. Go go enjoy life. Go plug into. And I know man, we got to pay the electric bill. A lot of folks are building and, you know, I'm not romanticizing. I do the same thing. But you're going to be more effective when you tap into the reason that you work, your why, right? This is why I do what I do, right? Because they could have a better future. So you know, thank you all for just getting on my nerves about this. Uh, Claudia, thank you very much. Okay, Jackie. Um, yeah, pretty much everybody here right now is the reason I finally took your advice. So thank you all so much. And Lion, 
Um, thank you, buddy. I appreciate you and your your coffee. I've, I've ordered two of them, and uh, I'm gonna get some of that beast milk. All right, me and me and Chase are gonna get some beast milk. I'll order him some beast milk. All right, I might have a typo. Milk. <laughs> yeah, I might have a typo. All right, so you ready to go? Let's let's get this. Uh, let's get this. Um, I can't even speak today. Like like intro, dude. Intro. Feet. There you go. Yeah, let's roll that thing. I'll play before we start. All right, let's be. Ready? Let's do it. All right, here yes, we go. Sir, go ahead. Are you looking to grow your business and your mindset alongside a fun and awesome pack? Grab a chair and your favorite beverage and join Mike Ashabrainer, the business mechanic, and his win-win network for the Hounds of Business Happy Hour. All right. Oh, my goodness. All right. So let's get through these uh these uh, superstars, man, we want to highlight people doing great, great things, man. And we got to start off with the one and only Sandra Gonzalez. Wow. Wow. What, 20 years, Marine Corps. Thank you for your service and sacrifice, first of all. And she's still serving. Now she's serving all of the, the good professionals, uh, executives, uh, people that are just driven. They, their business is an extension of themselves. Right. That's how we see it. And, and we can just do more. The more we grow, the more money we make, the more time and freedom we have to help others. And nobody gets this like Sandra does. So she has a retreat coming up May 17th to the 20th in Mexico. And uh, gosh, scan that QR code. Go find Sandra Gonzalez with two Z's. Uh, go check her out, man. She is just she's the real deal, man. She talks the talk, but she walks the walk every single day. Uh, cannot say enough great things about this lady. Uh, you won't be sorry. And, and just absolute generous person. Uh, top notch. So Sandra, we love having you in the hounds. Uh, you are fantastic and um, definitely support you and all that you do. You do life changing things for people and we just can't thank you enough. So make sure you go see her and you all heard me. All right. I'm finally on chapter two and I'm, <laughs> I can't put this book down, but my kids run in that crazy. So I have to. So anyway, Jen Drummond, all right, world record holder for the second seven summits. I had the honor of being on her pre-launch team and the book is out. It's rocking and it is amazing. It's, it's about life. It's, it's, it's just amazing. The woman's journey uh, is fantastic. Again, walks the walk. All right. It talks about resilience, about setting goals, pretty much guys, defining a life on your own terms. People tell us what we should be. We assume we should be one way, work a job, do this, do that. Oh gosh. And, and very few of us are happy. So this this book here, wow, this has to be one of my my top books. It's got to be. It's right there on my nightstand. Uh, Jim, we appreciate you, all you do for people. Um, and she runs well, she runs her business on top of that. Right? She's got a big old happy family that she takes care of. Uh, it's nothing to see her on the on the treadmill while she's doing uh, her Zoom calls, uh, getting things done, multiples. Uh, so check that book. It is life changing. It is. I had friends of mine reading it, and and they just can't stop talking about it. All right, so. She is amazing. Go to jindrummit.com, scan the QR code, take you right there, guys. You won't be sorry. She is amazing. Oh, and this, this wonderful lady, this is Lisa Marie. She's in Australia. All right. So we got Christine Bell in here that all the, all, the whole country of Australia. And we love that in the hounds, man. We, we're international. All right. We love it. So uh, I'm over there hanging out in Australia and learning about all that crazy wildlife over there. It's amazing. Uh, but yeah, she is uh, fantastic. So you get, and I went to this, I, I met a Melissa, she's in the comments. I met her in Lisa Marie's um, workshop. So three key ways to get visible, the heart centered way. Well, you know, I love that. That's it. Um, it's 8 PM Eastern New York city time. All right. That's March 13th. And of course, Australians are in the future. So if you're in Australia or over that way, New Zealand, it's March 14th at 10 AM. All right. I believe that's Sydney time, but go check her profile out, scan the QR code. Uh, it was amazing because I sat there and I thought, oh, it's another one of these attraction based kind of stuff. And then as I was just pretending to listen, I started listening and I engaged in it and it was really life changing. So, Lisa, you turned my skeptical country self into a believer. Uh, there's nobody who couldn't benefit from this. Uh, so absolutely go uh, check out her profile, check out her website and just go to the thing. It's free. It shouldn't be free, but we'll have that talk. So hurry up before I change your mind on giving this for free. Uh, go check her out now. 
but seriously, we love having her in a pack. She's just got a heart of gold. And um, she again, walk the walk. That's the requirement. You can't get up here unless you walk the walk. All right. Oh, my goodness. Well, who is this? So before we get started, your uh, audio room was rock solid. We've already got some really good people that uh, reached out to me. It wasn't even my my dadgum audio room, is he? Uh, and th don't you have an event coming up soon? Tell people. I have an offer, actually. I just uh, finished a certification on an assessment tool that is from Switzerland. It's absolutely phenomenal. It's a great tool. And I'm running a beta uh, for literally half the price, guys literally so just click that qr code come hang out on my profile say hi send me a dm ask me what it's about i'll tell you all about it and i can't wait i can't wait to meet you guys thank you mike yeah no i mean again sell being a sales manager over sales people not the same as running over customer service departments and stuff no. it's very different they see themselves as entrepreneurs entrepreneurs they're, they're getting paid for results man honestly so plug into this because this is a great way to network learn rub elbows with people in the know uh that's why i show up it's kind of selfish isn't it but hey whatever right win win <laughs> that's what i call it so there we go all right and hey i had to show this one last time these guys got me to write in this amazing anthology they have wrote more books than i've probably read at least in five years all right that's not a joke so shout out to uh, dr constance uh cj dr constance leland yeah. okay i don't ever see She's so many uh, different variations. And uh, Susanna Don, they really have helped me. And then also master storyteller and Hounds leader D. Grant Smith. Uh, somehow the combination of these superstars forced me into a coherent and intelligible chapter in this book. <laughs> OK. Uh, and other people read it and said, wow, that was great. I said, you should have seen the first draft. Holy crap. <laughs> Not good. All right. So uh, I can't talk about this. It's going to roll out in what, three weeks? Is that what she said? Two uh, starting Sunday, we can't talk about it no more. Oh, well, yeah, it's about it. to hit. So this is it. All right, get ready. Uh, I will absolutely be blasting this everywhere. The hounds will throw this out in drones. But here's why I love it. On it I talk about, and a lot of people talk about their journey. We talk about rags to riches after someone's done made it. But you're seeing it real time, oftentimes in the hounds. Yeah, we have people just getting started. We have people that are already making it who have already made their goals. But a lot of us are there. And that's what makes us special. Just like our guest today, Mr. Ron, right? Reach back and help someone else with your experience and your knowledge, right? Support. Mm -hmm. And that's what makes us special. So we just don't say it. We do it. And uh, thank you, ladies, for making this possible. I, I'm seriously honored and um, I, I'm excited about it. I, I can't wait. So they get the credit or the blame for, for how well my chapter goes or not. All right. And uh, last but not least, look, we are exploding, absolutely exploding. Uh, if you're a high level, uh, just heart centered person. You're in a service industry and, and you have to build relationships. You have to be there for people. You have to have that know, like, and trust guys. That's what we are. All right. We're getting things done. Here's the real simple thing. Scan the QR code, reach out to us. But here's the deal. Instead of getting up every day, wondering how I can get what I want and how I can grow my business. I go out there and help people that are like me in the pack and I help them get what they want. Guess what? Oh, I get more than what I want. And, and they expect me to say I'm great, but they don't expect all these rock stars of all these different walks of life and industries to say we're great. All right. So if you're looking for a place where you can belong, grow, uh, get that visibility. Uh, well, hey, scan the QR code, reach out to us. I'll be flashing it throughout the, uh, the show. And man, we're just happy to have you here. Rub elbows, network with people. Don't pitch slap with a P, right? But hey, follow each other, have conversations, ask questions. Ron is amazing. This guy is, uh, he's going to give it. We got, yeah, we got to get him up here before he falls asleep, Lion. Dad gum straight. He's like, all right. So I'm going to stop the ramble. Hey, hang on a second. Hang on. Let's get him up there. All right. We got to get the guy for blue collar backers up here. And uh, let's go ahead and bring him up. Mr. Ron Douglas, how are you today? How's it going? Oh, man. I'm, I'm, you you see how I'm doing it. <laughs> so you've been a hound for what a month or two, maybe? Yeah, about a month. Uh huh. Man, and you're you're just a great guy. So tell the folks a little bit about you, and take your time doing it because you got a resume like Tom Brokaw, man. I mean, it's, it's unbelievable. 
Uh, but uh, just tell the folks what you'd like them to know, and especially about the whole Discovery show, right? Discovery Channel. Okay. Um, I'm not sure how far back you want me to go, but... Uh, Eight years uh, old. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say birth. Uh, <laughs> well, I was breaking records when I, the day I was born, actually. I was, <laughs> I was 11, eight and a half pounds. And uh, yeah, <laughs> so... I've literally broke records from day one. Uh, oh, you're a poor mama. <laughs> yeah, my mom was 90, 94 pounds when she got pregnant with me. Oh, my <laughs> goodness. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I I've been, uh, let's see, I, I broke my back, was paralyzed from the waist down at 18. Um, I recovered from that, made a full recovery, uh, learned to walk again, and uh, joined the prison system and i was a prison guard at 19. i was on the riot team at 20. i was head of the riot team at 21. um and uh i was i was doing hand-to-hand -hand training um for several years and then i met my first i never met my first entrepreneur my dad was in the military for 22 years so I was surrounded by military people. I never met my first, I never met an entrepreneur. My first mm -hmm. entrepreneur I ever met, I was 23 years old when I first met him. And um, I still go visit him every year. Uh, his name is Alan Brown. He lives down in Texas. And um, I, uh, uh, we've been, we've been lifelong friends ever since. But yeah, I met him at 23. Um, he showed me what an entrepreneur was. And I was like, that's who I am. I was like, that's what I can do. I, I was like, wait a minute. You mean, um, you, you mean I can, I can make money and not have to have a boss and not have to, you know, do the whole, you know, turn you know, go reporting to work. I was like, I, I, I never fathomed. That's how, that's how bad I was. I never even fathomed that you could make money without a job. I thought you had to have a job in order to make money. And so, um, yeah. And so that was my first experience. I started my company. I quit, I quit the prison at 24. I started my company at 24, made my first million at 26. And, um, I've had over 40 companies, uh, since then, uh, both, uh, built m many of them up to multi-million dollars. Um, I've had, uh, record-breaking events. I've had, I've had uh, the 10th largest motorcycle expo in the motorcycle event in the country. Um, I've had the largest emergency preparedness expo in the country. It was called the self-reliance expo. I started that from scratch. I built up, um, I had the world's fastest. <laughs> this is one that nobody knows about. I'll tell you one that I, I, I keep forgetting to mention this. I don't know why, but I had the world's fast or at least the United States fastest road race, um, in North America where we actually blocked down, blocked out seven miles of highway. And we did a road race and some of our guys were reaching 200 mile an hour, which makes us the fastest road race in North America. Um, and uh, I did that, had a lot of fun doing that. Um, and then, uh, yeah, I just, I, I, I got approached by Discovery Channel. They wanted to do a TV show. It was kind of a bucket list item. I always thought it'd be kind of cool to do. Um, and so I said, yeah, why not? Let's do it. I did one season and uh, they wanted me to do five more seasons. I just, oh, man, I just, man, I just, it was a lot of work. It was a lot of stuff they wanted me to do. And at the time I was, I was already owned to like 20 companies at the time. And I was just kind of burning the candle at both ends. We still had our eight kids at home. Um, you know, we have eight kids. And so it was, my wife was homeschooling um it was a lot we got a lot going on i had i had all those businesses and i was trying to do that um yes yeah I like cannonball run yeah it was a lot of fun um and then but uh yeah i had a i had a lot of uh, businesses and uh you know they, they wanted me to do five seasons they wanted me to do 11 episodes per season they wanted me to start in three new businesses per episode that was just too much i just i was 33 new businesses every season i just ugh. I, and so, honestly, I told my wife, I was "Like, man, I'm about ready to have a heart attack." I was like, Let, "Let's let's just let's just chill." We, I was like, we, "We've made plenty. We don't need to do this anymore." So, I I strategically started selling my businesses, and I sold all my businesses. We moved down here to Southern Colorado, bought a ranch, 
and I just chill now. So we bought we bought up a bunch of real estate, and I just I just kind of chill. And so I do I do coaching on the side, just to, something to keep me from you know going nuts, you know, especially cabin fever in the in the winter. <laughs> Hey, well, good. I'm your next client, man. I, I'm, I'm, I got my ticket. Hey, hey, first of all, all of that with eight kids, that that's not a family. Oh that's a ball team, man. That? <laughs> that, yeah, that's, that's a daggum. The only one to beat you is uh, Lachelle Atkins, super mom, who's got 12. So she basically has the Atlanta Falcons wow. in her house. Right? Wow. Um, yeah. So, man, well, tell us about the first. So most people, they – so if you don't mind telling us, what is the first business that you jumped in at 24? What, what was the industry and what, um, what was that? So Alan Brown owned a wrecking yard. Um, and so my first job with him was cutting gas tanks out of cars that he was crushing. And it was the summer. It was like 110 degrees out. I was cutting <laughs> gas tanks out and old gas pouring on me. And I don't know if you, any of you guys know, but old gas just smells horrible. I, I stunk all day. Anyway, long story short to, to your answer, it was um, he, he introduced me. I, I asked him, I was like, man, how do you, how, you know, he owned the wrecking yard. He owned his own house. He owned the shop. He owned the equipment. And he didn't owe anybody nothing. And I, to me at that time, I was just like, you know, you know, looking back now, it's, it's kind of funny, you know, now that I do what I do. But back then, man, to me, that three acres was everything. I was like, man, this guy owns everything. He owns the world. And I was like, how do you do it? And, and so he, uh, he we, we went to lunch and he showed me how to buy and sell cars. And so, um, you know, he, he had gotten a car in. He says, you think you can get that car running? I said, yeah, I think so. And I'll never forget. It was a 70, um, it was a 72 Chevy, um, uh, Anyway, it was a it was a it was seventy two Chevy car, and I I grabbed it and I told him to say yeah I I think I can get that running, and so I got it running. He sold it to me for seventy five dollars. I got it running, and then he taught me how to sell it, and so I sold it. Owner financed it, uh, sold it for eight hundred dollars, four hundred dollars down, and man, I I got the bug after that. And by the by the time I was twenty six, I mean I think we had one hundred and fifty maybe 200 cars on the books people were financing them and i was doing uh class classic cars um i was uh buying and selling uh rust-free texas cars and shipping them all over the world i mean at the when i first started i was just you know i had a, a one car and a trailer and i was buying a car and i'd you know go deliver it and by the time i ended i was shipping out three to four 18 wheeler loads a month and they were going to Holland, Denmark, New Zealand, Australia. I mean, I was shipping cars all over the world. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Hey, hey, so real quick before Isabel, because I know she's got a bunch. But <laughs> before we get free, we before we pick, we we got to pick his brain. I mean, everybody came here for all this wisdom here. Exactly. Man. Uh, they're they're but, anxious in, in the comment section. I can feel it. <laughs> yeah, because I, listen, I, I know they caught this. So you you went from cutting gas uh, gas tanks out of cars for twenty dollars a so, day for twenty dollars a day <laughs> for twenty dollars a day. So how much experience did you have in the rest of it that that you did in those two years, or did you just figure it out as you went? Because I, that's well, a key in, thing. In all fairness, my dad uh, my dad was a a car junkie, and so you know, growing up, he taught me how to do tune ups and car. You know, we we worked on cars. Um, Mostly his stuff. He liked classic cars. You know, he was big into old Fords and stuff. And uh, when we were in Germany as a kid, I, like I said, my dad was in the army. So I was in Germany. And so um, I would uh, help him with a lot of these old BMWs and stuff like that. And, and guys would come over. Some of the GIs would come over and ask me to do a tune up or something like that. And, and so, I, I, I mean, I knew a little bit about cars. I mean, I knew my way around cars. So it wasn't a it wasn't a tough leap for me to 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 get into it but the business aspect because but yeah business, you can work on totally cars. yeah i had knew nothing yeah. about business i knew nothing but like i said once once i got that 400 dollars in my hand i know it, so, it sounds silly but once i just i i could not get it across my mind i i, I my mind just did not work that way once i was holding the 400 dollars 
And I realized I didn't need a boss to do this. I didn't need a job to do this. I was like, oh, heck no, man. I'm out of here, man. And so there was no stopping me. Honestly, it was, in all fairness, though, it was the it was the extreme opposite. I mean, I was gone seven days a week, 24-7, man. I was buying cars all over Texas. And it was, it, the pendulum swung the other way. It was almost too much. My wife was about ready to leave me. She was just, she was pissed off. I was gone all the time. I mean, I was working way too hard. Um, and so I had to learn, I had to learn balance just like anybody else, but I was just like a junkie, man. I was like, you mean I can make money and don't have to report to nobody? Shoot. You know, and I was out, I was gone. Dude. Such a phenomenal life story, Ron, you're extremely inspiring. And, and okay. So I got a few questions. The first one, because <laughs> I'm a military brat too, and I yep. served as well after, after my dad. Um, where were you in Germany, Lar or Baden? You know, I was, uh, my dad was stationed in Darmstadt. Okay. Um, and I went to Frankfurt American High School. Um, and I used to get off. Uh, so actually I did make money as a teenager. I used to, I used to get out of Frankfurt. I'd go to Ramstein Air Force Base mm -hmm. and I'd box those guys for money. <laughs> <laughs> that was my first job. That was my first job is I'd go on there and I'd wow. ask those guys. And I'd, oh yeah, because your dad was Army. Yeah, my dad was army, okay. so I'd go talk trash to the Air Force guys, and they'd want a box. Yeah. <laughs> we'd box, and I'd make money, you know, uh, boxing these guys uh, after after school. So that was my first job, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> what was the 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 first the the mentor that you were talking about earlier, and that you are still friends with now? Yeah, what Alan was Brown. what was what was it about the first conversation? Because You didn't have any entrepreneurs in, in your wheelhouse, you know, and, you know, I'm a military brat too. So you work for a paycheck and you, you know, that that's the role. So what was it that, that sparked that you went, huh? Okay. So maybe there's another way to live. You know, it's, it's kind of a funny story. The reason I even met Alan Brown was by accident. Um, me and my wife had just gotten married. We were pretty young at the time. We had just gotten married and she's, she was uh, doing our uh, checkbook and she moved, she, she messed up the decimal point somehow. And so instead of having $25 till the end of the month, which was enough gas money to get back and forth to work, I had 25 cents, which wasn't enough gas money to get back to work. <laughs> and so I, uh, I worked four days on and four days off at yeah. the prison, 12 hour shifts. And I remember passing a wrecking yard on the way there. And I was like, man, I was like, I, I don't know. I, I said, I guess, you know, I could swing by there. And maybe this guy has a job for me that I can do. You know, again, I was looking for a job. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I did. Um, uh, the, uh, the opportunity to work um, and make enough money. And so I, I It w w was crucial. So, I mean, that was my whole goal when I got there. And so when I, uh, um, yeah, yeah you yeah, know, Air Force guys are not bad at all. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. I was Air Force, Scott. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I didn't mean what you guys say about Air Force. Air Force. Force. <laughs> We always fought with the Air Force guys, you know, the Army guys with, at Frankfurt America. Is Colonel America acting up? Is he acting up over? <laughs> Uh, Air Force is really handy to to get you out of the field when you're. Oh yeah, you know? oh yeah. <laughs> But uh, anyway, so I, again, I just went over there looking for a job. I just told, and I and I was flat out honest with him. I said, "Man, I'm busted." I said, "I need I need a, a job," and I was like, "And I need something that pays daily at the end of the day." <laughs> and he's like, uh, um, "He goes, I can I can do that." He says. Um, you know, what do you know about crushing cars? I was like, man, Hey, I, was like, I, can, I can tear apart a car. That's not a problem. <laughs> and, uh, he goes, okay. He goes, well, in order to crush these cars, I got to cut out the gas tank. So I said, okay. So I spent all day doing this, you know, the first couple of days doing this, and man, like I said, it was hot out. I was just, man, I was cooked at the end of the day. I was big and strong at the time. And I was, like I said, I recovered from that broken back and I, like everything else, I went the opposite. I was just, I was in the gym all the time. And so mm -hmm. I remember when me and my wife got married, I was benching 400 pounds. And so I was, I was a big boy at the time. And uh, so, you know, 
yeah, I just worked out all day, just boom, 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 cutting all these uh, all these gas tanks out. But I knew that's not what I wanted to do, you know. And I I, I sat there and um, uh, yeah, thank you. Yeah, he's yeah, he's still with us. I just talked with my dad earlier today, so thank thanks for that. Um, but uh, uh, yeah, so I uh, I knew I wanted more, and so I asked him flat out. I says like, um, you know, can you um, could you tell me how to do this? I was like, and at the time, it was so interesting because at the time he was 40 years old. I'll never forget that. He was 40. And he had just quit his job when he was 35. So he he worked as a lineman for an uh, electric company. And he quit that and and opened up his wrecking yard. And but he owned it all free and clear. He didn't owe anybody anything. And so I just I was just so taken back by that. You know, it's like, and you can own a piece of this world and not owe anybody nothing. And so I just didn't understand. I just couldn't get past it. But he sat down and we went to lunch and and obviously that was just the beginning of many, many lunches and many, many talks. And we sat we used to sit there on Friday nights and I'd, you know pour out my dreams, you know, and what I wanted to do. And, you know, he gave me a lot of guidance. We would, again, me and my wife had just gotten married. He would guide me through our arguments and our chit chats and, you know, and he was just, he was a father figure for me, you know, as well. And so, um, yeah, I, I, I speak very highly of Alan Brown and, and like I said, I, I, I go visit him, uh, at least once a year still. So, yeah, he's down in Kennedy, Texas. I opened up that Supermax farm down there. Uh, there was a Supermax prison system down there, prison down there in Kennedy, Texas. Uh, I opened, and uh, I was there the day it opened, and and uh, I was helping teach the riot team, and that's how I met Alan Brown. He lived there. Wow. wow. Unbelievable. Yeah. I don't remember if I said this already. I, I haven't been this excited since I thought I was going to get a cease and desist order from Papa John's a year ago. <laughs> All right, this is fun. Hey, Ron, are you able to talk about – are you good with talking about the, the blue-collar backers? Yeah, I talk about anything, man. Whatever you want to talk about. Yeah, real quick, because I know everybody wants to get pick that brain, but I mean that that's awesome. I mean, you're you're a humble guy. You know what you do for me? It's like, my goodness, I hey, I can make it up there. I can I'm gonna go get me a gas uh tank and just start cutting on it. Cause I mean, obviously <laughs> that's the formula, right? I got all kind of junk out here, man. I'm in the country too, right? So um, so tell us about that. How did that get started? So you this is what I love about your life. You just kind of seem like you're just a nice guy. You're trying to make things happen. You're, you're, you know, you're not pompous, right? You're like, oh, this is cool. And you're just kind of childlike curiosity, man, and wonder. So is that how you stumbled upon that or not? Well, so at the time I, I, I did um, Blue Collar Backers, what had happened is I had, uh, I had been doing a lot of free coaching at the time just because I liked doing it. And people would take me out to lunch. Hey, you know, you know, you you hear the old saying, "Can you?" Hey, I'll take you to lunch, and I'd like to pick your brain. You know, and I, okay, okay. Right. So, and I and I can't turn away a free lunch, man. I mean, I'm telling you, I'm all about the free lunch. So, I, yeah, that was a sucker. That was a sucker move on on my part, and uh, I would I would definitely go to the free lunch. So, and I would just spill out. I just spill it all out, but. Word got around, you know, and there was a guy that had a restaurant and he was in deep, deep trouble. I mean, deep, like he was ready to close like any day. And he came to me and said, hey, man, I need help. And I went in there and I'm like, dude, you're doing this all. I don't know nothing about the restaurant business, but I know not to do this. And so anyway, I coached him on some stuff. He turned it around and he just happened to know somebody at Discovery Channel. And they, and I, I never asked him for anything. I hadn't talked to him in like two years and, but they were at his restaurant having lunch and they were talking about this TV show they wanted to create. Um, and with, with business coaching and he jumped in and just said, you got to meet Ron Douglas. <laughs> and so they, they were like, you know, I remember the guy called me and goes, man, I don't know what's so special about you, but I, this guy is just raving about you, man. He goes, I got to come meet you. And he, they flew out to uh, California to meet me and, or to Colorado, California. I've never been out. Anyway, I, I've never lived in California, but I live in Colorado. So he flew out, to, they flew out here to meet me. And um, I was just, like I said, I was just 
talking to them like I talked to you guys. And I showed them around some of my businesses. I showed them some of that stuff. They wanted to know, you know, some of my finances because they, you know, they wanted to put some claims up there or stuff. So I was like, that's fine. So I showed them some of that. Um, and, you know, they flat out asked me, do you want to do a TV show? I said, you know, that's be cool. I wouldn't mind doing it. But, you know, I, I said, I wouldn't want to do more than one season just to try it out because uh, I'm not sure if I want to do it. I want to commit. And so they said, yeah, let's try it. And so that's how it started. He's so damn likable. I, he's <laughs> like, he, <laughs> this guy can just sit here and read a menu. And I'll be like, ah, that's really interesting, Rob. <laughs> it, it's like when Tanya Eberhardt talks about the moonshiner ancestors. And, you know, it's like, <laughs> she did that on my show. <laughs> she does it on every show. And it's, it's great. You're like, wow. You know, like this, I didn't expect that. Right. Like, all right. So, Isabel, you got a question? I you, you, earlier you said you know they wanted me to do five season and at this point it was just and and it's funny because Ron what I heard was you know had I done more season it would have been a job that's what yeah. I heard yeah so like well, the one, it, would, it really would have I yeah. it wasn't the, and it wasn't the direction I wanted to go because again if you mm -hmm. if you watch the if you watch the um, the preview or whatever of blue collar backers. Basically, what it is, Dan and I back the business. You come up with an idea, and I come in and I back the business. Mm -hmm. All that did was create a bunch of people wanting to talk to me about borrowing money. You know what I mean? And that's not, it wasn't the direction, the coaching of the coaching that I wanted. I want people to come pay me, not the other way around. Everybody can ask <laughs> for money. And here, let me, I'll share a little bit of a secret for you guys. Money is rarely the problem rarely is it the problem with your business if your business isn't doing good it's not because you need a cash injection almost always it's not that and so but everybody that was the first thing they wanted you know they wanted to meet me they said hey i want to meet you i got this business idea that i want you to invest in oh, man. and so it really wasn't the direction i wanted to go either so that's kind of why i stopped it was kind of like shark tank meets hillbilly meets you know, you know what I mean? And so I just, I didn't want to be a shark tank. I don't want to, I don't want to be an investor in a bunch of businesses. So that's why, that's part of the reason I scrapped it. So for all of the businesses that you've built from the uh -huh. ground up, for all of the businesses that you've helped, what is the common thread? Other than you, because we are our businesses, right? Yeah. So yeah. other than you, what is the one thing that you can repeat from one business and one to another business and you know for damn sure it's going to work? I'm I'm asking for a friend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, history. Yeah. Yeah. well, there's a couple. There's a couple of things that come to my mind right off the bat. Okay, I'm I have my pen, my paper, I got everything here. And I got a hot flash now. And talk, <laughs> talk slow. <Yeah. laughs> And I'll refer to my prison days because there is there is a point to that. Um, and I, I don't talk about this often because I have no desire to remember the prison days. But <laughs> um, there was there is one lesson. I If there's anything I learned about prison, it didn't matter how big the guy was, the challenge, right? It didn't matter how big that guy was. I just had to hit him one more time than he hit me. Does that make sense? Absolutely. I just had to outlast him. I just had to outlast him one time, just one hit. That's all I have to outlast him. And so um, that's the same with building a business. I just have to keep taking the punch longer than everybody else. And so that that's one that, that's one piece of advice is just don't. Most people quit too soon. You know, they're, oh, it gets too hard or whatever, and they just quit too soon. Um, and what do you think that is? Are people um, afraid well, people of success? Are scared, people are scared to fail, which leads me into the next one. Everybody is scared to fail because they're, you know, maybe they invested $2,000, and that's their only $2,000, and they cannot afford to lose that. So the mm -hmm. minute they get that $2,000 back and, they're, and, and they see that it might fail – they pull it out and they, they just quit the business, whatever, you know, whatever the excuse is, but I'm sure you guys have heard uh, of these things here. Um, yeah. Uh, anyway, I'm sorry. These, the, all these posts are kind of distracting. I'm trying to, <laughs> I'm 
tell you talk, but I tried to read these at the same time. We try time. to entertain you. Especially yeah. as these shivs and two. <laughs> oh man, I don't, I don't miss those at all. But anyway, um, and uh, uh, anyway, going back to what I was trying to say, so the uh, they quit uh, too soon. Yeah, they quit. They quit too soon, um, or they're scared. They're they're so scared. They, their money can't grow because they're holding on to it so stinking tight. Mm. I'm not scared because I know that for every dollar I put out there, I can make 10. So mm. when I go into a business now, I mean, I, th I throw every dime I have at it. I don't care if I, and, and when I do it, it's, um, uh, you know, obviously I've done it over 40 times now. So it's, it's a lot easier for me now. But what I'm saying is if I sell a truck, and I sell that truck for $5,000 and all I've got is $5,000 to put into this business. Well, guess what? That business is getting all 5,000 bucks. I mean, it's not getting $3,200. It's getting everything I got. And, and, um, another word, I swing for the fence every time and I bank and I bet on myself. I'm not scared to bet on myself. It's not because, having a plan B. No, no plan B. Because if you, if you have a plan no, B, I'm, then I'm, plan I'm, A doesn't work. I'm I'm a jump out and build my parachute on the way down kind of guy. Burn the ship, <laughs> burn the bridges. No, there's no plan B. And there's never a plan B for me. So you what's aim the for the moon. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, you aim for the moon, you might hit a tree branch. That's my model. There, <laughs> if I aim for a tree branch, I ain't hitting oh, yeah. shit. I'm not even getting off the ground. Yep. And, 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 the, and, the, and, the, and for everybody else out there to remember, uh, all 40 of these businesses, we were talking about this before the show, but all 40 of these businesses – I, I got a, a laundry list of failures on every one of them. Um, I just wasn't, I just didn't care. Uh, you know, it's funny because when I moved down here and I, I told my wife, I was like, you know, I really want to get into real estate. I said, all the business I've ever owned, I never did real estate. And I said, I want to do real estate. <clears throat> and here I am. I had, I'll never forget. I was in there talking with the county and the county is like, how do you not know this? They go, you own 35 properties. How do you not understand this concept? It was, I can't even remember what we were talking about. And I was like, well, you know it and you can tell me how to do it. So just tell me how to do it. And they're like, I don't understand how anybody can own 35 properties and not know how to do this. And I was like, I don't understand how somebody can know this and work for the county for 12 bucks an hour. <laughs> and he was just like, he was like taken back. He was like, whoa, wait a minute. I was like, get out there and make some money, man. It was like, don't be scared to do it. And so in other words, yeah, I, I, I just I just swing for the fence, man. I just go for it. I don't know how electricity work, and yet I use it every day. Yeah, I learn as I go, man. I just, what do I need to learn today? That's all I need to know. Yeah. I, I just, let's go. And it's full steam ahead. And so, you know, here we are. I've got, what, 35 properties. Um, and I built that over a course of two, I built it over a course of two years and I used zero of my money, zero of my money. I've got a $5 million portfolio of real estate and I have none of my money invested. <laughs> and so everybody's like, how do you do that? And it's like, do it. And so I just one day at a time, I mean, just boom, 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 boom. And I just, I just did it and, and just, I did it one at a time and just learn and failed forward. I just failed all the way through it. And so. Here we so are. So what what's for you? What's the difference between quitting and walking away because it's time to walk away? How does it uh, how does uh, it feel? How do you know when to walk away and how do you know that it it would be quitting? No, I agree. I um because sometimes regret, we do have to walk away. Regret. I look at it and go, am I gonna regret this in five years or am I gonna be grateful? Yeah. If I told, if I went and told my wife right now that I'm shutting this business down, would there be a huge weight off of my shoulders, or am I going to go, dang it, man, or am I going to regret this? And if I feel like I'm going to regret it, I keep swinging. Um, oh, I love that. So it's a gut yeah. thing. It's a gut thing, yeah. Um, and, and but I, but you know, and and you know, don't get me wrong. Though, there there are businesses that I've quit. Um, because it well, just sometimes didn't, quitting is the right thing. Or I built it up. I, I like there was a business that I actually this the mentoring giants. I'll tell you one. Um, I started 
Mentoring Giant started out as LBA, Local Business Assist. And what I was doing is I was going to the to the cities and I was offering free um, free training for the cities to offer to businesses in town. And I was helping with economic development. Well, what I learned from that was the cities didn't care, <laughs> one, and two, um, the only people that were coming to me were people that again, didn't know anything about starting a business and didn't have the business. Everybody that already had a business didn't come to me because they thought the free training was going to be a waste of time. It was going to be like how to start an LLC or something like that. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it goes to the old adage that sometimes it's just not, you know, uh, you know, if it's free, it must not be of any value. Mm -hmm. And so I made the, the transition. I quit do, I said, I'm not going to do this. And I told my wife, I'm not going to do this anymore. And But then I transitioned that into mentoring giants. And then I started uh, mentoring. I, I transitioned. Matter of fact, if, um, yeah, I, I still use LBA, LLC, you know, DBA, mentoring giants. Wow. And, and that was an excellent question and an even amazing answer, Ron. Right? Because I've, I've done that. Yeah. You know, I think far too often, uh, we, we're in this position where we have options or we're, we can not do it or do it. And, well, you need to be in a position whether you do or don't do. Every winner, every megastar, everybody who's paid the price has said that. And I'm feeling it I, I'm like, well, I, no, there's no well. Burn the bridge. Be done. There, it's either homelessness or success at this point. Right. Mm -hmm. That That's there is no other option. It's either do or, or do, man. And yeah. I think that's it. You don't have to force that. But what you need to be thinking of, and I love what you said, am I going to regret this? Look forward, think about it. Yeah. You know, am I going to regret this? And I, I've sometimes, I mean, from my experience, man, it's been external. Like I've wanted to walk away from stuff, but I said, you know what? That's going to let other people down. That stopped me, right? That stopped me and said, is this what I really want? Or is this fear or whatever acting mm -hmm. up, right? right? And I think you're, you're dead on because the business stuff, we'll figure out the business plan. We'll figure out the people and the methods. But unless this is strong, unless you know who you are, that's where I start. Cause anyway, let me let me ask the question because I know people are dying to, to pick this brain, man. Okay. In, in your experience, what are the common challenges that businesses face when attempting to accelerate that growth? Ooh, say that again. What are the common challenges businesses face when attempting to accelerate their growth? Okay, so I would say. Um, probably on that one, I would say that the biggest challenge when Acceler is not, again, it, it, they're, they're squeezing it too tight. They're, <laughs> they're holding it too tight and it, it can't grow because they're choking it out. Um, they're wanting to oversee everything or they're holding on to it too tight or they're holding on to the money too tight and they're not investing in the company and putting it back in the company. The, um, you know, one of the things that, um, that I've, I've talked about before is that, um, uh, you, you have to know when to now, when I start a business, even if I start with $0 and you know, I'll, I'll you know, I take on that challenge. The very first person I get usually is an office manager, um, when I'm starting a business and because I don't want to take the calls, I don't want to deal with it. You know, there's certain things I just don't want to deal with. And so the, the first opportunity I get to hire somebody, I hire them and I, I put somebody in to handle that stuff because I don't want to deal with it. And what that does is it frees you up to grow the business. And so many people try to hold on to that and want to answer every call that comes in, want to deal with all that stuff. And I don't, I, I do the exact opposite. I, I, I let it go, man. Let somebody else run that and just focus on growing the business. Mike, are you listening? <laughs> Mike, were you listening? Oh, <laughs> just, you again, I'm asking for a friend. Were you listening? <laughs> yeah, I walked right into that, Ron. And you it's guessed. who, <laughs> not how, right? It's who, not how. It's who is it, who is going to do this because they're going to do it faster and better and cheaper yes. than trying to figure uh, it out yourself. Totally. And, and I'll, I'll tell you when I learned that. I learned that because I was doing a business where I was literally doing everything. I started a wildlife company at one time. And it was like nuisance wildlife, like raccoons in your chimney and stuff like that, right? And so uh, I was literally working seven days a week, 
I had a raccoon on the end of my catch pole. I had a catch pole. And I, I'm standing in this guy's attic with a raccoon on the end of my catch pole. And I'm setting an appointment. I got my phone and I'm setting an appointment for the next call and for the next appointment. I was like, this is freaking ridiculous. And I said, that's it. I got out of there because I'm about ready to kill myself. I'm about ready to fall through the rafters and fall through this guy's floor. Trying to, I'm trying to write down this address and this appointment to the next call. And I, I hired a lady and I was making, I think I was making about a hundred thousand. I just started the business. So I think that first year I did a hundred thousand dollars. I hired her and the next year, just because of, just because of her, I can point to her and say, that's the reason why. And we tripled, we made, we did three fifty dollars the next year. And it was wow. only because I took a lot of crap off my plate and was able to focus on the business. Now, Izzy, I'm not fighting you. I'm just starting, okay? Because I realize it. I mean, I, I, I say this stuff, and then when I have to do it, I'm like, well, hang on a second. Because I told you, I told somebody the other day, I said, why in the world? You're capable of making $1,000, but you're wasting three hours doing a $20 an hour task. That's right. Uh -huh. And then she's over here throwing egg on my face saying, hey, look in the mirror, redneck. That's like, right. Yup, yup. It's easier hey, said than done. I'm man. your hey. alligator. I used, to, I used to sit down with my office staff. And so I, I decided to go in and, and sit down and have a meeting with my office staff this very first time. Right. And uh, I got to the point where I was, I was, you know, I was thinking things through. And so I went in and I said, I'm, I, I want to come in here with a, just a right hook that nobody expects. And so I came in there and I sat down and I said, okay, tell me the good and handle the bad. And so she had this stack of stuff and she went, uh, okay. And she set that over there and she, and we went over the numbers. She goes, well, we've done this much in sales. We've done this, we've done this. And so she told me all the good. I didn't care about the bad. I paid, that's what I paid you, her for. Right. And so she handled the bad and she, in other words, basically I, I, you know, I put more on her and she was able to handle it. She stepped up to the plate. And so she took care of it. And yeah, but you I, trusted her with it. Triple, I was able to triple the business because exactly. But you trusted her with it. You, you yeah. didn't, you know, yeah, over uh, over her her head and her shoulder and watch what she was doing uh, and no, I, I never her like her part of thing and because that's what they do. I mean, even when it's not their business, that's what they do. That's what that's what sales management do. That's what you know leadership yep. does. Is just. And you know, and out of all these businesses, where were you at eight at eight oh two? Yeah, no. Yeah. And out of all these businesses, in all fairness, I've only fired one person. Um, everybody okay. else, I've 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 worded it in a way that they fired themselves. Yeah. And yeah. so they they actually would quit because of the way you know if 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 it came down to it, right? Most of the time it doesn't, but you know. You know, like a guy comes in three times late or something like that. I just tell him, say, look, man, if you were in my position and you had an employee that you were depending on and he showed up three times late to a job, uh, what would you do? He goes, I'd fire him. <laughs> what, do you, what do you think you should do right now? He goes, I quit. <laughs> you know, whatever. But you know what I mean? I, yeah. I put it on there. I, I'd make them think about it yeah. and make them answer it and make them self-correct a lot of times they would just self-correct <clears throat> that's one of my favorite things to do when you hear something so bizarre and stupid you just say it out and say look let me make sure i got this right and you say it out loud and everybody's like yeah it sounds stupid when you say it yep. that way <laughs> like, yeah. yep. Let, yep. let me ask you this i have to know uh because people think i'm against technology and ai Ron, I'm not against AI. I'm against using it as a damn brain replacement. Yes. Yeah. Uh, but I'm I'm all for efficiency and getting things done, but I'm looking to connect. So here's my question. You know, how do you recommend that businesses leverage technology to streamline their processes to get that faster results? Um, that's a good question. The um I leverage every bit of technology I can. Um, because if we can see the way I look at it is if can it save me time and can it save me money? And if it can, if, if it can, if you can say yes to both of those questions, I implement it. Um, and uh, because time you can't get back, and money, I'm all about building fast. You know, most of my companies I've built, when I build them, I build them in record time. Um, and everybody asks me how you do that, and most of the time, here's the secret sauce: is I ask myself this question. I say, okay, I want to get from here to here. 
All right. I want to be making a million dollars a year, right? Well, whatever. Let's just say, okay. And so I asked myself, okay, now how do I do that in half the time? You know, and most people don't, most people don't say that to themselves. Most people say, okay, I need to hire an employee. I need to increase sales. I need to do this. I need to do that. Great. Now, how do you do it in half the time? Wow. It's all a mindset thing. Yeah. Once you, put it, once, you put it in your, once you put it in your mind that you can do it in half the time, it's like, wow. Uh, it's, the same, it's the same thing as what, what you're uh, speaking about, Ron, is the same thing that 10x is easier than 2x. Because if, if you go with an attitude of 2x, then you just add onto what you're already doing. If you're going 10x, you have to revisit everything. You yeah. have to rethink everything. Well, and, exactly, and, and and a lot of times it, it's self limitations, right? It's, it's self limiting. What you've done to yourself is you've limited yourself. You go, oh, I, I can build this business up, but it's going to take me five years to go to a million dollars. But that's only because you've never asked yourself, how can I do it in half the time? Mm -hmm. Well, that's what what happens when you self doubt though? Like, I mean, because that's that's what stops greatness from from forming. People think, well, I can all that. So, wh where did you get this? undeniable resolve that you can do this what was there a pinnacle moment was it they're cutting that one gas cap yep. off like what, what was it that that well, you went hell well, i got me, this. It's different than everybody else and and i don't recommend anybody having to replicate this part of it but obviously it was when i broke my back um you know i you know flipped that car and and broke my back i was drag racing and uh flipped a car broke my back and was paralyzed from the waist down and you know, <laughs> that was a lot of lonely nights. Yeah, it's painful. That's a lot of lonely nights. You're in that hospital by yourself at 18, thinking that you're going to be paralyzed from the waist down. And uh, you have to sit there and either accept it or not mm. and you go through all this emotional roller coaster and you're there by yourself in the dark listening to the stupid machines and the beeping and all this oh, I, i'll never forget that and so i had actually joined the army a lot of people don't know this either but i had actually joined the army i joined the army on a on a wednesday and i was supposed to report to basic on monday and mm. my MOS was going to be underwater demolitions. And uh, so I, wrecked, I wrecked on a Friday before before I was supposed to report and broke my back. And um, But it was the best thing that ever happened to me. I, I, I would have been miserable joining the Army. I mean, I, that's just not who I was, and I hated it, but that's the only thing I knew at the time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but anyway, going back to your story, that resolve of not giving up, I remember the nurses coming in at three o'clock in the morning, and I was down in the, uh, I was down in the, uh, in, in the, uh, I had snuck down, and I was in there, uh, in the, uh, what, the room where you, you exercise and all that stuff, and, and the like, physical hey, therapy, physical therapy room, and I was like, they're like, you can't be in here, Ron. You're not supposed to be in here. You're supposed to be in your bed. I'm like, what the hell am I going to do in bed? Staring at the ceiling at three o'clock in the morning. And I was like, screw that. I'm not doing it. And they would say, you got to go back to your room. Fine. So I go back to my room and I was like, good. That's another, that gives me even more reason to go, you know, exercise even more. So I go to my room. I'd wait five minutes, get back <clears throat> in my wheelchair and roll back down there <laughs> and do it again. And, uh, I, you know, they come in at three 30, four o'clock and they're like, you, I did how did you get back in here? And, 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 uh, but I did not walk. You know, one of the things I told myself is I was going to walk out of the hospital. Obviously mm -hmm. that didn't happen because due to policy, they make you ride a wheelchair out. But as soon as I got out, they rolled me out the front door. I got up and walked to the car. Um, and I, I did walk from there from the hospital to the car. And, uh, uh, but man, I tell you what, that was a scary feeling. That that first six weeks where I didn't feel anything 
that was that was you want to talk about an emotional roller coaster man yeah. I, I have never i've never been through such a mental battle in my life what was the prognostic at the time i had crushed the vertebrae okay. and um when i crushed the vertebrae but it was the swelling yeah. and that had actually caused the paralysis but they didn't know that at the time they just yeah. weren't sure yeah. and um as the swelling went down i started to slowly get feeling back in my leg mm. but it was like it was like you know when you sit sit on your legs and they fall asleep i felt like that for like six weeks it was <laughs> miserable man oh, <laughs> yeah no fuck. that's not fun but, it, but i kept telling mm. myself <clears throat> there was at improvement least, at least i feel it at yeah and so it was improvement, but yeah, obviously I don't wish that on anybody, but that was probably the mental battle that has set my pace for the rest of my life. I mean, I always go back and go, you know, I, I can always go back and say, Hey, at least I can walk. <laughs> you know what I mean? And yeah, you know, and the no, rest is all, the, the know, rest is all small potatoes, right? Yeah. Everything the rest else doesn't matter. Terrible. You're not afraid to fail because you've been at the bottom. It, it drives my wife nuts. I mean, <laughs> it, it really does. I mean, if I did, had, she know you at the time? No. Okay. No, but she now she does. But I mean, but that that attitude still is yeah. in me today, and so it drives her nuts. I mean, if I have a million dollars and I have an idea to build a million dollar company, I will use a million and one dollars to do it. And I, I will swing for the fence every time. I use every freaking dime I got. And she's like, you don't have to do this. You know, and, <laughs> you know, I put it all on the line every time. Yeah. And, but you uh, do have to do this because that's in your nature. That's just my nature. I just yeah. can't, I, I can't do it any other way. And, yeah. and when we were building this $5 million portfolio of real estate, you know, yes, I don't have any of my money invested now because I refinanced them and pulled my money out. But I put every dime into some of these, you know, every, not every dime I had, but I mean, I, I didn't ask for backup. I didn't ask for anything. I just swung for the fence on every one of these projects. Mm -hmm. And my wife's like, you are crazy. Why? We don't need to do this. And it's like, <laughs> I know, but it's just, that's just who I am, you know? Yeah. And so, yeah. <laughs> There's a good question wow. in the audience from Mark Reed that says, if you had been par uh, paralyzed permanently, permanently do you think that you would have had still become an entrepreneur sorry at this hour my french comes out <laughs> uh, yeah honestly i just do not know because because yeah. i never met an entrepreneur until i was 23 yeah. i didn't meet an i didn't know what an entrepreneur was i didn't know what i wanted out of life yeah at that time and so there's no way of knowing i was only 18 um and i didn't meet an entrepreneur for another what six years so i mean i didn't I met, well, five years. I was 23 when I met Alan. So mm. I I didn't, yeah, I don't think I, I, I don't know. I think if I would have met an entrepreneur during that, you know, while I was paralyzed, I probably still would do it. Um, mm. I probably wouldn't have done what I do now, being that I was in a wheelchair. But yeah, I, I uh, yeah. I, I, I just never, I never could put it in my head. I never could see myself in a wheelchair. I, I, I tried to envision it in the hospital. I tried to accept what the doctor told me. And I just yeah. could not, I couldn't see myself in a chair. I just couldn't see myself in a chair. I just, I just, no, I just, no, no, can't do it. I just well, can't you're, do it. you're resilient. So you would have survived and you would have thrived either way. It's just it, that this. It would have been better. a different story. Yeah. It would have exactly. been a different, different, a different adventure for sure. I mean, <laughs> you know, I convince my wife now. I convince my wife now that I take two weeks off every year and go on a motor, go to, on motorcycle trips. You know, I, I've ridden to the Arctic Circle. I've ridden down to Terra de Fuego, South America. I've ridden wow. all over the world. And um, you know, obviously that wouldn't have been something I would have been able to do. Hey, you know? you, they're you know they're, they with enough money you can adapt a lot of stuff. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> Uh, you know, oh the, all gosh. with the hands and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, uh, we're very grateful that you got out of that chair and out of that bed, and that you um, too. Thank you. Build everything and gave us an hour of your time to answer all of our no, same it, questions. It's funny because I, I, um, I had gotten kicked out of tenth grade. Most people don't know that either. <laughs> 
I never graduated high school. I never went to college. The first time I stepped foot on a college campus, I was actually there. I was invited to speak. <laughs> Kids, was, go to bed. Don't listen. <laughs> I was actually there to speak. I couldn't believe it. I, I was sitting there. I'll never forget. I was over at BYU. It was BYU. Yeah, BYU in Utah. And I was sitting there and I was looking out the windows of those mountains and the whole campus. And I was like, wow. And I was like, I've never been on a college campus before. <laughs> I was like, this is my first time. And I didn't, it didn't, I didn't realize it until I was actually there getting ready to speak that I learned that, that I, that I thought of that. But yeah. There's uh, more than one path. That's right. Absolutely. Mike, oh, is it your turn gosh. to talk? Yeah. So here's, <laughs> here's one thing I would like to get everybody to understand. I, I would love for everybody to get through their head. Everybody here, everybody, I don't care if you're a janitor. I don't care if you have you flip burgers at McDonald's. I don't care. You already have the skills to become a millionaire. You already have them. And most people already have the puzzle pieces. You just don't have them in the right spot. Amen. Man. Love it. Well, this guy is so good. All right, first of all, he gives me confidence because he's just the most down to earth gas you know, and cutting guy I've ever seen. So for a guy over here in the country, uh, thank you. And then you go and drop a question or an answer and uh, and, and wisdom like that. So I don't even think I want to ask my question now because he just no <laughs> he leave, leave it leave it Mike leave it I I think <laughs> I left I lost I think he I met ended, my dad. the show is over he ended it for you it's, it's... yeah. Yeah, now I know how the Discovery Channel felt when he come on. <laughs> so, uh, hey, honestly, Ron, you you are fantastic, man. You gave us such, not Amen. just hope, you gave us a lot of wisdom and just nuggets. We got to have you back for a part two because I have a, a yeah. slew of business questions, man, that, that yes. you know, I know. Yeah, if you get one of those uh, beast beers, right, beast beer. <laughs> or, uh, yeah. beast Message. Milk. Business idea. Yeah, we're not going to tell Chase what he really says. We're just going to mail it to Chase and Harry. I, I think he went to sleep, so we're going to tell him. Right? Um, but hey, honestly, it's a pleasure and a privilege having you in the pack, Ron. You bet. Uh, love, love the heart centeredness and you're proof of it, man. You're just a good guy trying to figure things out, make things happen, and you've made a huge impact in lives. Uh, I respect you like no other. Uh, does anybody? Hey, Lion, you got anything to to bring up or anything, Izzy? Oh. No, I, it was a fabulous and delightful conversation, backed with wisdom and fun, and and I can't. I I hope I get to work with you very soon. Well, yes, I, I'll tell you what I will do if if you guys are interested. Um, you know, I, I did this uh, for somebody else earlier today, and and so I don't mind uh, sharing this with you guys. But um, I've got a um, a fifteen minute calendar link. If you guys message me on uh, LinkedIn, I will talk with anybody on here one-on-one, -on -one, uh, give you 15 minutes to just brainstorm your business, brainstorm your business ideas, whatever it is you have. Just message me on LinkedIn um, and uh, just say that you heard it here. Um, just say, I'm from the Hounds. I need 15 minutes, Ron, and I will send you a link and you can book a calendar. Uh, uh, you LinkedIn. are out of this world. Yeah. And I thank will, you. Thank you. All right. To help anybody hey, that, hey. that reaches out. Oh, I love it because we had what a hundred peak viewers and now like, <laughs> the remaining people who didn't fall asleep get, get mad, man. Hey, we won't tell them that. We'll just tell them later on. So, and we grab um, hey. 15 minutes, dude. <laughs> man, hey, I'm telling you, I, I don't want to end, but dad gummit, you know, he's gonna send me a bill I can't afford. So I'm not a guy. All right. So hey, honestly. This was fantastic, man. Thank you. We got so much out of it. The comments were bumping. Guys in the audience, hounds, friends of hounds, love you guys. If you're looking to join a pack of like-minded, uh, you know, heart-centered super pros, you come to the right place. Hit us up, man. It's not a compound. It's not a prison. We don't lock doors from the outside. Uh, you can be part of multiple communities. We just want people to be unstuck. And if this guy didn't get you uh, pumped up to be the, your best self, I don't know what the hell is. So on top of that, uh, if you don't have anything else, hey, same bad time, same bad channel. We have the awesome Melissa on next week. Cannot yes. wait uh, for that. So, Mr. Lion, real quick, brother. Yeah. I ordered coffee from you. Yes. Where do we find the coffee? Thank you for that. And I just sent you a message, Ron, in your LinkedIn as well. Oh, okay. So thank okay. you. So 
Yeah, I just and so crazy is my wife um, is the main brains behind this, but we just started out on coffee business. So anyone can order coffee directly from the factory. We do drip drop shipping in essence. Um, and you can order directly through us. And our mission is supporting veterans. So every bag that you purchase, wow. a percentage nice. goes to the vets because I'm a retired Marine. Ooh, raw devil dogs. So <laughs> you can get it uh, at brutique.store, the brutique.store. Freshest coffee on the internet. Yes. Wonderful. Can you uh, drop the link in the comment? and the, the... Uh, Sure. Thank yeah, you. absolutely. So that Thank way you. we can go back to it. <laughs> yes. Yeah, he said that it. like he worked it. Your your wife made you practice that for a week. You said that like you were on TV. That was flawless, man. Hey, give it. Mike, go if start. you don't know that women rule the world yet, I don't know what the hell is the matter with you. Our next business really? idea. Beast milk. Our next business idea. <laughs> yeah, be, don't tell him what it really said. <laughs> um, so, yeah. hey, seriously, guys, I, I feel I'm seriously, I know y'all tell me to, I'm redneck Santa, but I seriously feel like a poor kid waking up in Santa's workshop every day, surrounded by brilliance. I mean, you know, I, I don't know a lot of stuff, but dadgummit, I got a community of people who fill in those holes, man, and it pushed me up. So, Ron, pleasure. Uh, Lion, thank you for running the back and fighting me with the controls because I keep telling you I'm ain't going to touch stuff, but I keep <laughs> doing it anyway, and the man keeps coming up and helping anyway and isabel yes i heard it from ron i will listen to ron and you now now, right. now you know what's gonna happen every time you don't listen to me i call ron and he's yeah. he's a big dude <laughs> so you're gonna listen yeah to him. and he fit in good in kentucky so hell, I am, you know. have you been in kentucky oh yeah oh yeah been out there many times. I was I was actually just out there looking at some real estate, to be honest with you. <laughs> well, hey, I got a nice eight by twelve shed, man. It's, it's only been used fourteen hours. It doesn't have plumbing yet, but you can help. We can we can negotiate. Don't worry. Oh man. my god! Thank All you right. guys. Thank you for coming, everybody, in the comment section. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Oh yeah, we're out. Hey, join us. Check us out, and we will see you next uh, week, same time, seven p.m. Eastern. And uh, gosh, man. Join the pack. It's explosive. Visibility central. We're pushing each other up and we're getting things done. We're the hounds of business, not just leisure and having fun. All right. Getting things done. Thank you, Ron. Thank you, guys. Oh, man. See you later. Bye, Bye. guys. See ya. Thank you all for stopping by. Be sure to follow, share, and like, and send me a message if you had fun today. Y'all come back now. <laughs>